Hey, hey everyone, it's your Peacekeeper coming at you with the next video in our How to Play series on the German Cruiser Line. This is the Tier 2 Dresden class of cruiser. The Dresden class of protected cruisers were built in 1906 and commissioned in 1908 and 1909. The two ships of the class are the SMS Dresden and SMS Emden, both of which are in-game at Tier 2. The Dresden class cruisers were coal-powered steam the difference though between the two was is that dresden was actually powered by a set of parson steam turbines and emden was powered by a set of triple expansion engines a uh, little bit of a different approach there it seems like they were really intending these to be kind of a prototype for the um the steam turbine setup that wasn't really all that common at the time being a protected cruiser, the class offered excellent close-range protection of machinery spaces, which helped aid the ships in close -in engagements in the North Atlantic. And just to show you what the protected cruiser scheme looks like, you can see here it looks like a turtle back armor scheme in that the protected spaces, the machinery spaces, are all down low. They're below the waterline, or nearly below the waterline. And they have these sloped decks here on the outboard sides of the ship and what would happen well before we get to that let, let's talk briefly about why it's not considered a turtle back armor scheme in the fullest sense there is no exterior belt armor on this you have nine millimeters of plating that was basically the outer skin of the ship if you remove that that's where you get all of your armor is all on that citadel area and that's that's it there's really no other armor aside from the conning tower and as a result that's why these are protected cruisers and not like a turtle back armor scheme like the later german cruisers and german battleships are uh in close in engagements what would happen would be though the shells would be coming in so shallow they would hit this plate and they would either bounce up or fail to penetrate into the vitals of the ship. This actually was really good at close ranges, but as you can imagine, as you get to longer ranges and the shells start to fall steeper and steeper, they start to hit this angled plate closer to perpendicular, and that means they had a better chance of penetrating. And that actually holds true in-game, uh, but we'll talk about that when we get to the in-game gameplay style. In terms of service history, both ships serve extensively, extensively at foreign duty stations. Emden was assigned to East Asia and the East Asia Squadron, and Dresden was sent to the Caribbean, both of which were sent there in, in their respective places in 1913. Dresden was due to return to Germany for refit when World War I broke out, and because of the war, she actually stayed in the Caribbean for a while and acted as a commerce raider before joining up with the East Asia Squadron. Dresden would go on to fight in the Battle of Coronel and the Battle of the Falkland Islands, where she was the only German ship to survive. She fled to Chile, where she put in at Mas Out. <laughs> I'm butchering this. <laughs> Mas A <et> Tierra. <laughs> the British fleet pursuing her fired upon her while she was in the harbor, which actually violated Chile's neutrality. And uh, as a result, the Germans ended up scuttling Dresden. Incidentally enough, Dresden is still in the harbor and I believe is able to be dived upon now. Uh, she was surveyed in 2002 for what that's worth. Emden remained in the Indian Ocean and became a commerce raider there where she is credited with sinking the Russian cruiser Zemshug and the French destroyer Mosquet. She then got in a battle with the Australian cruiser HMAS Sydney off the Cocos Islands, and she would be beached there to prevent her sinking. She would later be scrapped, and that would be her fate. In terms of their in-game gameplay style, the Dresden is plagued with two rather unfortunate attributes, in my opinion. First, she has really slow shell velocity, which means big arcs, which means long shell flight times. And the second thing is she has really low shell damage at longer ranges. She doesn't have a whole lot of armor-piercing penetration, nor does her HE seem to be reliable at all. This is offset by her having an insane rate of fire, and at closer ranges anyway, very good armor-piercing penetration. And that's kind of a theme for the German cruisers. They're really good. Their AP is really good at closer ranges. It's actually better at closer ranges than it is at longer ranges. Of course, the differences between AP then becomes kind of negligible because you're not always shooting up against, you know, super heavily armored ships in cruisers. 
Of course, uh, she also is quite maneuverable and fast for a Tier 2 cruiser, which actually makes for a rather enjoyable ship to play. And overall, I think in terms of Tier 2 cruisers, she certainly is one of the stronger ones. Speaking of strength, let's go over those stats. She has 17,100 hit points, up to 50 millimeters of armor. That actually is a bit of a misnomer. The 50 millimeters of armor is going to be on the uh, gun emplacements. She actually has higher than that, 100 millimeters at the conning tower, and it was 80 on the citadel slopes. The main battery consists of 12 4-inch guns. This is actually two more than her realistic complement, and she is missing all of her secondary guns from real life. They have a 10.9 kilometer firing range, a 4-second reload time, a really rather low 4% chance to um, start a fire, 1,200 HE damage, and 2,300 AP damage. She does have four 7.92 millimeter MG08s. Uh, might as well not be in existence. At tier two, you shouldn't be seeing any carriers unless you're divisioning up with a tier three. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, max speed 25 knots, turning radius 580 meters, rudder shift time 4.9 seconds, detection range by sea 9.5 kilometers, detection range by air 4.5 kilometers. In terms of upgrades, main armaments mod one. Yep. That's all you really can choose. Um, yeah, Auxiliary Armaments Mod 1, you have four AA guns, and you don't see any 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 aircraft at all, and you have no secondaries. Not a very useful skill. Magazine Mod 1, t- chances of getting detonated is already pretty low. Chances of getting detonated in a cruiser is also quite low. So really don't have any reason to take either of those two. Anyway, enough of me babbling. Let's go dive on into a battle video. All right, so this battle is going to be a two and three fight, a tier two, tier three fight. Of course, uh, being in Dresden, there's not a whole lot really to show with this. You can see there's three battleships on each side, a bunch of cruisers and three destroyers. Um We'll, we'll get to see a good mix of just about it, all the, the strong suits. You're, you're going to see the excellent rate of fire. You're going to see the... Uh, lackluster long range damage. You're going to see the lackluster fire chance and HE damage. You're going to see the fast ship and the maneuverability. All this is going to happen in this battle. Uh, about 45,000 damage in a tier 2 ship. Two kills. Um, yeah, the, the battle actually ends up being fairly short because I end up dying. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> um, not not because of any particular mistake, mostly because of, of good um, good good gunnery on their part and a uh, team that decided to go the opposite direction of the way they probably should have gone, but that's all right. Uh, of a, also of interesting note is the, the gun arcs. You know, you've got a pretty good... Uh, you got a pretty good amount of guns to bring to bear on one side. It's not difficult to bring there. You can see it's not difficult to bring six guns to bear. And so long as the guns themselves, you know, so long as you're not uh, doing anything too crazy with them, you can actually engage multiple targets on multiple sides of the ship if you're really good and multi-talented. Uh, it's a little difficult to do that because of the rate of fire of the ship. At four seconds, those uh, four-inch guns come up really fast. Also, those four-inch guns are susceptible to basic firing training and advanced firing training. If you're one of those SEAL Clubber types and absolutely want to SEAL Club, you can certainly do that. I forget the name of the map, but uh, we are going to the north, and my hope was is that these other sh- cruisers up here would join me, as well as maybe a battleship. And we can kind of help stem the tide of them coming around this side. And uh, that ends up not really happening. (laughs) Yikes. Okay. So we finally have something to shoot at. It's a Dertsky. Just kind of blind firing over the the hill here. We can kind of guesstimate where he's going to go based upon the... The mini map icon. Wow, we even got a hit. All right. 396 damage is the normal pen damage for HE. Obviously, there's no over pen for HE. And um, yeah, you can see, look at how long these shell flight times are. <laughs> like, you you literally have to aim like off the screen to hit some of these, these ships sometimes. 
Hey, you know, we're racking up some pretty decent damage, though, here, right off the bat. Ooh, another 800. And we got a Caladon here that we can go and engage. A little bit of tactical beaching here to avoid being detected. And continue to engage the Caladon. Now, you can see I switched to AP. And that's because I was really quite curious to see if I could get any, like, penetrating hits on the Caladon. And the answer to that is, is you can. Uh, it's not going to do a whole lot of damage at this point because of the... There you saw one pen and one over pen resulted in about 600 damage, I think. So, okay, so now we got uh, the Wakatake. It's popped out and around. And we will go ahead and engage him with our guns and see if we can't uh, get him destroyed and out of the way. And we are going to turn around because, for one, we got all their fleet is there, and I am up here by myself now because our destroyer went through the middle here and was able to escape. So it is just me up here right now. Very little support from my team. Yep, and there goes my engine. Got taken out. We definitely need to repair that, and we will here shortly. Switch back to AP, switch to the other side here, and totally anticipating the Caledon coming around this corner and just waiting to do some big damage to him. We'll fire off a salvo at the Wakatake as we wait for the Caledon. He should be coming around the corner any minute now. Get those guns pre-turned. Look at the mini-map. Okay, so he popped out. There he is. And begin engagement. You can see here he took a huge chunk of my hit points off. I took 2k off of him. But, we're going to turn the tide here. There's 4,500. Yep, missed that one. <laughs> Not a good sign. But, 1,800. Yep, go ahead, and keep, go ahead and keep presenting that profile to me. There's another four grand. Oh, come on! You gotta be kidding me. Oh, no, RNG. So, at this point, it's a matter of keeping a decent angle to try and get, a, get any shells you can to bounce. And, um... There we go. Finally got him down. So now we've got this problem, and its name is Nassau, and, um, yeah. There's not a whole lot of good that's going to come from this engagement because, oh, hey, we got we finally got some friendly help up here. Our Weymouth who decided he was going to come help. Unfortunately, he does so at a time like, oh, <sighs> We're taking fire from a St. Louis and Nassau, like, yeah, this is not going to last long. Like, dear Nassau, leave me alone. I, this is one of those times that you wish you had torpedoes, something, to, to shake the conviction of this Nassau. The HE on this ship is so lackluster, like, I managed to start a fire, like, woo! We got a fire going. This is, like, the best thing that could have happened right now, because... Honestly, this is about the only way you do damage to battleships with this ship. We're going to switch over here to the Wakatake real quick because he's one nearly dead, two he's spotted. So if we can kill him, that will help our team win. And I'm looking forward to winning this. That would be great. Nassau isn't necessarily engaging me, but you'll see I am continuing to mix and match my WASD. And down goes the Wakatake. Unfortunately, down goes our Weymouth. The Wakatake manages to smoke him with torpedoes. And now it becomes a battle of whether or not I can continue to maneuver and mitigate damage to the point that my teammates come and help. Unfortunately, uh, the team seems pretty uninterested in helping. They seem pretty uninterested in just about everything at this point, except for sitting on our cap. And, you know, you, you do what you can to try and mitigate all incoming damage. So, whoop, he missed. We, we actually do get some successful misses here for a while. Um, still no fires, you know, getting a lot of shell breaks here. I'm trying to get a fire going so I can at least switch to AP. 400 damage, not a whole lot. Somebody's shooting at him now. It'd be nice if more people would shoot at him. Okay, turn, turn, turn. And misses again. Oop, second incoming shells, misses again. Hey, another fire. Woo! All right. Maybe we can get another one. Ow! St. Louis's landing hits. Which is interesting because the St. Louis is out of my range. But of course, the St. Louis is a tier higher than me. So it has more range. Has better guns overall, in my opinion. And... Ah, he finally gets a hit. He got one hit there. 
We're gonna keep on rolling up the damage. Misses. Man, that this is like the frustrating moment with when you're in a Sal player. Like, oh my goodness, the constant hits, 200 damage every single time a shell hits. Yeah, doesn't seem like much, and that's because it's not another miss. It's not a whole lot of damage, but what it is is really annoying because the shells just continuously land. There he landed a hit and overpen for 720 damage. We are at that range where it's very difficult to be citadeled by another battleship. He's going to have to aim a little bit lower. He's going to have to get some lucky underwater penetrating hits to take me out via citadel at this point. But incoming shells manages to go ahead and get the hits. And... Oh, misses. Can I... Can oh, he got one. All right. So I am now dead. And... Overall, you know, I'll just take this opportunity to talk. Overall, this ship kind of gives you an idea what the upper, what the, the tier 10 is like. You've got good rate of fire. You've got really, really strong AP at closer ranges. Although, in truth, the Hindenburg's AP is actually really good at long ranges, too. And Hindenburg's HE is a heck of a lot better than Dresden's is. And, in fact, HE beyond the first three ships is actually quite strong and good but uh anyway let's go do us uh, some battle screens here and keep in mind you know it's a tier two ship right so forty four thousand nine hundred and seventy six damage and that's two citadel hits two sinks which is awesome and you can see here we ended up finishing first on our team with 951 base xp and there's the detail screen. Only 11,000 damage with fires. Almost 12,000. And the credit screen. Anyway, I don't mind playing Dresden. Obviously, I won't keep it because I've got Emden in my port. But uh, if you needed a tier 2 for seal clubbing, it's definitely a worthwhile ship for that. Anyway, I'm your peacekeeper. Like, comment, subscribe. And thank you for watching.